The post-up prowess of Nikola Jokic and Aaron Gordon fueled Denver to their fifth straight playoff win on the road to give them a 3-1 series lead in the NBA Finals. The Nuggets' front court combined for 50 points and 19 rebounds, while criminally underrated defender in the Joker also tallied three blocks and a deep-range bomb from 30. With 12 rebounds, Jokic became the first player in NBA postseason history to put up a total of 500 points, 250 boards, and 150 dimes in a single playoff run. With 12 dimes and zero turnovers, Murray became the first player of all time to post double-digit assist numbers in his first four finals games. Contavious Caldwell Pope was a pest defensively, whether it was blitzing the passing lanes, his individual matchup, or desperately rotating over for contested shots. KCP finished with a personality changing three steals and two blocks, which included swiping it away from Butler twice on one drive to the basket. Shedding the reputation of being a perennial dunk contest runner-up once and for all, high-flying lob threat Aaron Gordon racked up a team-high 27 to go along with six dimes, seven boards, a steal, three triples, while being a game-high plus 29. The mere 26-year-old Bruce Brown contributed a timely 21 off the bench, including 11 in the fourth quarter. Bruce is displaying that GM Calvin Booth signing him to a two-year $13.2 million contract last offseason was a complete free agent robbery. Double B2 is due for a massive raise when he inevitably opts out of his player option for 23-24, given Aaron and Bruce each scored at least 20 on 19 for 26 shooting combined. It was only the fifth time in history that teammates have both scored at least 20 on 70% shooting in the finals. That hadn't happened since 1991 with Michael Jordan and Horace Grant. To have an extra 48 from your third and fifth scoring options at best shows you how insane Denver's supporting cast actually is. Brown's spot-up three-point shot is fundamentally sound as hell with a solid L-shaped release and paralleled footwork, as we got a taste of in the Lakers series with how he attacked the top defender in Jared Vanderbilt, Brown's slashing is tough to gauge. That ability was also on full display in Game 4, as he was attacking the likes of Duncan Robinson and Caleb Martin before beating the rim protection of Adebayo to the punch. Bruce then started showing off the entire package offensively, attacking Miami's drop coverage off the dribble in the pick and roll, which included a Jamal Murray-esque reverse layup. And with Jokic in foul trouble, Brown would break down Robinson with a couple saucy combos before pulling up in his grill. It's time to get this man a bag. But who specifically are the Nuggets making look foolish? I'll be blunt in saying they're making a certain man who goes by the name of Kendrick Ladale Perkins and uses the catchphrase carry the hell on to be dead wrong. All right, Dr. Seuss. Just a few months ago, here was Perk calling Jokic a stat patter. I watch the games. I'm watching Jokic pass the ball and I'm watching his guys catch and shoot, catch and shoot, no hesitation, good or bad shot. And let me tell you one thing, it goes on, it conversations goes on in that locker room and players know where their stats are. Are you sitting here and saying Nikola Jokic is having his numbers pat? Is that what you're saying? You heard, you heard what the hell I said. Now here was Kendrick developing his argument for why the MVP voters are racist which essentially took Joker completely out of the race for his third consecutive award this year, which it's looking like he should have ultimately won by a landslide. But I rest my case, cue the aged like milk perk take. I don't know the criteria no more. I don't know if it's because it's the number one seed. I don't know if it's the number six seed. I don't know how you judging it. Is it we judging off of advanced stats or who's the most valuable player? You take them off this team? We don't know. We don't know, but we do know this. Since you do want to bring it up, we do know this, that when it comes to MVP vote, when it comes to MVP vote, 80% of, of the voters are, are white American. No matter what talking heads like Perk try to claim, there's simply no withering around the fact that Nikola Jokic is an unselfish superstar that gets the ultimate most out of the 14 other players on this Denver roster. For those like Stephen A, who say he's not a great post-up player, I'd refute that by saying the Joker has now more than doubled up the second-ranked Joel Embiid for the most points scored from the post in these playoffs. 
during the regular season, despite playing just three more games than Joel, Nicola had over 100 more points than him in 22-23, while also leading the NBA in that category. Jokic is the most skilled center to ever step on a basketball court, not to mention one of the most skilled players to have ever played the game in general. And it's not even close to being solely the basic or advanced numbers that make that fact crystal clear. It's how Jokic learns from and gets the best out of the veterans on this team that make his playmaking that much more effective because he's a leader. The players Jokic refers to as But Ish, Ish, uh, Jeff and, uh, and him are kind of all are all heads, let's say like that. Um... In Ish Smith, DeAndre Jordan, Jeff Green, and KCP should be praised for their egoless adaptability into this 15-man unit and how they value keeping the vibes up at all costs instead of worrying about playing time like they easily could be. But the fact that those veterans are as bought into the system as they are also points to the fact that Nikola is a likable number one option that everyone can take a back seat to. That's rare to find in this league, meaning a guy who's uber talented, yet as humble as they come. The Joker is just that, and it's showing up not only on the stat sheet, but with his enthusiasm, his family over everything mentality, whether it's with his brothers or his wife and child, and in terms of between the lines, how he dominates the game by controlling the pace. Another thing to mention with Jokic is how he's opted into Mike Malone's system. A guy with his talent could easily just demand the ball in the post each time down and throw a pity party for himself when he doesn't get it, like we've seen many players in this league succumb to doing. Of course Jokic would like the ball, but he realizes that in order to make the most out of any situation, you have to sacrifice your personal needs for the greater good. That very realization allows Nikola to mesh with the likes of Aaron Gordon, who was a go-to weapon in Orlando before being traded to Denver in 2021, but had zero hesitation whatsoever in making it a top priority to buy into the offensive system and make his money by playing off of Jokic offensively. Aaron is your prototypical modern-day NBA combo forward, who can just about do everything for you. He's essentially a developed version of the player we talked about in yesterday's video in Christian Brown. When Gordon's knocking down triples like he did in Game 4, by draining three of his four attempts from distance, you saw how unstoppable that Denver spacing becomes, because Aaron's already such a threat with his ability to cut back door to receive low man entries or lob passes that he becomes such an unpredictable enigma when he finds his flow from deep. Orlando was rebuilding when they traded him, but if the Magic could go back in time, maybe they would have asked for a bit more in return for AG. Gary Harris and RJ Hampton, the two players the Magic got back in the deal, both averaged under 10 points per game in 22-23, while Gordon gave the Nuggets 16.3 points per night on 56% shooting and elite defense. AG's addition to help turn this fully healthy Denver team into what it is, which is a current powerhouse, isn't talked about enough. Remember, when he was dealt to the mile high, Murray tore his ACL and missed both the 2021 and 2022 playoffs. MPJ was also out when the Nuggets were swept by the Warriors last year at full strength, Aaron's displaying that he was the missing piece for this Nuggets system with his glue guy-esque attributes and mentality. The biggest piece of value that Aaron gives Denver, though, is his defense. Because while Jokic makes Gordon a better offensive player, something you rarely hear brought up is how Gordon makes Jokic a better defensive player, which is something that can be heavily evaluated in future Denver videos. If you enjoyed that breakdown, help the channel reach 100k by subscribing, appreciate your support, this was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.